Hello everyone, welcome back to the Linux Int YouTube channel. In this video, we are gonna talk about the bash commands. The commands that we will discuss in this video are the most common and the important commands. If you are working with the bash on your Linux based operating system or Mac OS or if you have installed the bash on your Windows based operating system, then you must be aware of these commands. This is my Linux Mint 19.3 Cinnamon and let's see that what is bash. Bash is a shell program which listens to commands. We can choose the bash on the terminal. Most of the people say that working on the terminal is the scary part because you have to write multiple commands and the text on the terminal. But once you get familiar with the terminal then you will feel that working with the terminal is very easy and time saving. So how does the bash work? Bash reads input from the terminal and check its meaning. It communicates with the operating system and perform the task that is required. So without any further ado, let's see that what are the most important commands of bash shell programming. So the first command that we are gonna discuss is the echo command. Echo is built in command in the bash and shell programming. When we write echo and write some text on the terminal, then it print it on the terminal. So it has printed Linux hint on the terminal. You can write the text into the single inverted commas or you can write it into the double inverted commas like this but in every case you will see that the output is same. So we can use the echo command to write anything. We can type anything in the echo command like welcome to the Linux Hint or I can type my name or we can type hello. So this is how the echo command work in bash to print anything on the terminal. Bash is very powerful. While we are working on any operating system, we navigate to our files and folders and we can create new files and the new folders by using the GUI. And similarly, we can create the new folder here as well. Right now, I am in my home directory and if I ls here, ls is a list storage command which is used to show files and folders in the current directory. So you can see that these are the files and folders that are available in the current directory but it is not showing the hidden folders. If you want to see the hidden folders then you have to write here ls-a and it will show the hidden folders as well. And moreover if you want to see the details of all the files and the folders then you have to write here ls-l and it will show all the details of the files and folders. And similarly we can use the ls-la command and it will show all the details of the files and the folders which are even hidden in the current directory. And here D shows that it is a directory and here we do not have the D it means that it is a file. And this information shows the read, write and executable permissions of the file. We can clear the terminal by writing clear. So this terminal is just an interface, a text based interface which we use to access the bash. It actually takes the command and work on it. If you want to print your current working directory then you have to write pwd and it will print your current working directory. So here home is the current directory and the Linux hint is the active user. If you want to change your directory then you can do it easily by using the bash. For example if you want to go to the desktop directory then you have to write here cd which is change directory and then you have to write the name of the directory like this desktop hit enter and you can see that the directory is changed by using the cd command. If I ls here it will show all the files and the folders that are present on the desktop directory. And if you want to go back to your previous directory then you have to write cd double full stop hit enter and you are back to your previous directory. And similarly if you want to go back to your downloads folder then you have to write here downloads hit enter and you are in the downloads folder directory now. So if I write pwd here it shows that we are in the downloads folder directory. Writing the ls will give all the files and folders detail that are available in the downloads folder. ls-a will show all the files and the folders that are hidden. Alright. So let's go back to our home directory. Creating the files and folders with the bash commands is very easy. You can create the files and the folders with a single command. 
For example, if you want to create a txt file, then you have to write here touch. Touch is a specific command which is used to create the files. And now you have to write the name of the file that you want to create like myfile.txt. So if I ls here, you can see that it has created the new file that is myfile.txt. Let's change the directory to the desktop and create some files and folders on the desktop. Let me just delete these files and folders. If I want to create a file on my desktop, then I will write here touch. And now we have to write the name of the file like file.txt. And you can see that it has created file.txt on the desktop. And similarly, we can create a .html file with the touch command index.html and uh, here you can see that it has created index.html we can also see the information of the newly created file with ls command and uh, here we have file.txt and index.html we can input some data into the txt file or any file by using the bash if i want to save something into my file then i will write echo on the terminal and then i will write what i want to save into the file like hello and welcome to the linux hint after writing your text you have to put this sign and after this you have to write the name of your file in which you want to store this line file.txt all right so if i open this file you can see that it is stored into this file hello and welcome to the linux hint you can also see the data that is stored into the file by using the cat command cat file.txt and it has printed on the terminal hello and welcome to the linux hint that what is stored into the file so the cat command basically print the data on the terminal which is saved into the file. If I input something into the index.html file, so we can print it on the terminal by using the cat command. cat index.html and it has printed here Linux int which is saved in this index.html file. You can search a specific word that is it present in the file or not and it is very easy with the bash commands and for this you have to use the grep command and after this you have to write the word that you want to search and here you have to write the name of the file. So it will search hello into the file.txt and it has marked it red. It means that the hello is present in file.txt. And if you want to count the matches into your text file, then you have to write here grep hyphen C and then write your word that you want to search and the name of the file. So basically it will count that how much time this word has appeared in this file. And one time hello is appeared in file.txt. So if I open file.txt, I copy this line and paste it multiple times here. and save this file and I again run this command so you can see that it has printed 8 it means that hello is appeared in file.txt 8 times we can print only the match pattern on our terminal by using the grab command so for this purpose we have to write here grab hyphen o the word that you want to search and the name of the file so you can see that it has printed hello eight times on the terminal. It means that hello is appeared eight times in every line. To create some files, we can also use the nano or vim editor. So to use nano, write here nano and write here the name of the file, file1.txt. And the nano editor is opened on the terminal. So you can write any text that whatever you want to write here. Hello and welcome to the Linux Hint again. And uh, you can see that it has created file1.txt here on my desktop. And it contains the text hello and welcome to the Linux Hint again. By using the bash we can also create the folders. And for creating the folders we use the command mkdir. And then we have to write the name of the folder that we want to create. For example hello bash. 
so it has created a new folder here that is hello bash so by using mkdir command you can create the folders so by using the bash we can also delete the files to delete any file we have to write here rm that is used to remove a file and after writing the rm write here the name of the file that you want to remove for example file1.txt so when this command will be executed you can see that file1.txt is removed here so if i ls here you can see that there is no file1.txt present on the desktop so similarly if i write here rm file.txt it will remove this file.txt and you can see that there is no file.txt present on the desktop to remove the directories by using the bash we have to write here rm hyphen r and then you have to write the name of the directory hello bash and it will delete the directory so you can see that the directory is deleted from the desktop and there is no directory with the name hello bash along with the file system you can use the bash to see the information of your system like if you want to see the version of an install package then you have to write here the name of the package like Kodi. Kodi is a media player that is installed on my system and then you have to write here version and it will show the version of the installed Kodi on your system. We can see that where Kodi is installed on my system so for this purpose we have to write here which Kodi and it will print the path where the Kodi is stored on my system. So these are the multiple things that we can do by using the bash command. So this was all about running the single command on your terminal. But what if you want to run the multiple commands or the series of commands simultaneously on your system. So for this purpose we can create a .sh file. In .sh file we run the commands and when we execute this file all the commands are executed simultaneously. This is my script.sh file and we are going to write multiple bash commands here to search for a particular directory to see that if a particular directory exists in our system or not. So for this purpose first of all we have to define a variable for the directory dir and uh, here you have to write the name of the directory like hello bash and you can see that there is no space here between the equal sign and the name of the directory. Now we have to write the if condition here if hyphen d dollar directory in bash we access the variable with the dollar sign so therefore I have written the dollar sign with the variable name. When writing the if condition we have to give space like this and after writing the if then we have to define then block so if this directory exists then what it should print dollar dir exist and if this directory does not exist then it will print echo dollar dir does not exist and end of the if block all right so i have saved this file here hyphen d is the flag which is used to search the directories. So when we execute this .sh file then all the commands will be executed simultaneously. So there are two ways to execute this file on the terminal. So the first way is you can execute this file by writing here bash and then the name of the file that is script.sh hit enter and you can see that it has printed here hello bash does not exist. So if I create this directory mkdir hello bash and if I run this bash script again so you can see that it has printed hello bash exist. The second way is executing this file is like this script.sh and you can see that we have the same output in both cases. If your script.sh file is not executable then you can grant it the executable permissions by chmod plus x and then write the name of the file script.sh and in this case the executable permissions will be granted to the file. We can also take the input from the user like the user will enter the name of the directory and it will be searched in the program. Echo enter the name of the directory. Let me just remove this line. 
and now we have to write here read and we have to store the name that is entered by the user into a variable that is tir all right so this read will basically read the name of the directory that is entered by the user and it will be stored into the variable that is dir so if i go back to my terminal and run this file again so enter the name of the directory hello bash and it prints that hello bash exist and if we enter the name of the directory any random name like xyz and you can see that it has printed xyz does not exist and similarly we can search the files here by using the bash so let me just change this program enter the name of the file read f name so when you are searching for the files then you have to write here hyphen f instead of hyphen d hyphen f is a flag that is used to search the files in system and similarly we have to change the name of the variable here f name f name here and here as well so if we save this program and go back to our terminal and run this again so enter the name of the file that you want to search and uh, I enter the name index.html so it has printed here index.html exist because if we ls here we can see that index.html exists in this directory and uh, if we run this file again and uh, we enter anything random so this file does not exist so that is how you can run the multiple commands simultaneously by creating the .sh file. In this video we have seen that what are the most important bash commands that we should be familiar with. And moreover we have seen that how we can run the multiple bash commands simultaneously by using the .sh file. So that's it for this video. I hope you found this video useful. Don't forget to subscribe our channel for more useful videos like this. Thank you.